Welcome to the Women's Heart Health Summit. I'm your host, Dr. Mark Menelcino, Medical Director of the Mental Clinic in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Thank you so much for joining us. This is your chance to hear from the international world's experts to achieve optimal health, optimal women's health, and prevent and reverse heart disease. We're very fortunate today to be joined by Dr. Margaret Christensen. Thank you so much for joining us, Margaret. Hi, Mark, and so happy to be here. Well, let me tell the viewers a little bit about you. Margaret Christensen is board certified in integrated medicine and is an Institute of Functional Medicine certified practitioner and was a board certified obstetrician gynecologist for 23 years. She first became interested in functional medicine 17 years ago when trying to solve the riddle of her own health challenges. Initially focusing on women's hormonal health, her boutique practice has now gone into the Carpathia Collaborative, a large multidisciplinary functional medicine practice based in Dallas, covering the full spectrum of complex chronic disease. Carpathia, which was the ship that rescued passengers from the Titanic, guides clients to safe harbor away from the Titanic of our floundering conventional healthcare model. Carpathia provides 360 degree functional lifestyle and nutritional medicine and includes on site teaching kitchen, yoga studio, and education library hosting community learning events. She's a faculty member of the Institute for Functional Medicine since 2007, one of the best lecturers on the team, I may add. And Dr. Christensen is super passionate about educating her clients and her colleagues about whole systems medicine. Again, what a background, and thank you yeah. so much for joining us, yeah. Margaret. Yeah, you're welcome. I'm just really, really happy to be here, and I'm happy to talk about what we're going to talk about, too. So. Well, you know, I know for me, I'm fortunate when I get to sit in the audience and listen to, or we're up on stage presenting together, but how great for all the viewers to hear from the teacher of teachers. Oh, thanks. Uh, thank you. You really bring a lot to it. Thank Is, you. you mentioned doing this change to the Carpathia type of model in, in functional medicine way back in 07. You were really one of the pioneers that saw this new pattern. Was yeah. there something that started that transition for you? A absolutely. Actually, it was actually um, back in 2001, and uh, I got really, really super sick. Uh, I couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. I had this very booming um, OBGYN practice that, um, uh, you know, I was doing great. I had uh, all these nurse midwives working with me. We were just doing this, you know, really amazing, uh, progressive medical care. And I was just getting, feeling worse and worse and worse and worse. And very long, long story short, um, it took eight years to figure out what it was, but it led me into functional medicine in, in 2002. And then I started teaching in 2007. And basically the underlying cause was environmental toxicity. I had severe mold poisoning and didn't know it. And my whole family was sick. And wow. that is, that's what got me in. Um, and uh, so for that I'm really grateful and I know you've had Ann Shippey I think talk uh, about uh, toxic mold and uh, and I'll talk about that at the very end um, but uh, anyway that's that's what got me into functional medicine and it was just absolutely amazing when I started applying these principles to what I was doing with women in women's health care and um, uh, in hormonal balancing, it, it absolutely just absolutely changed the game. And it wasn't all about, hey, a pill for every ill uh, and, you know, drug it out, cut it out, which is basically how we're taught. Um, um, it was, it was, hey, let's, let's figure out what's the underlying root causes at all levels, body, mind, and spirit. So there you go. You know, I've heard people talk about give the pill for the ill, yeah. but I don't yeah. think I've heard cut it out or drug it out. That's, yeah, yeah. Is that unique to obstetrician guys? <laughs> that's well, you know, that's, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, some of my favorite practitioners are the female mm -hmm. specialists, and mm -hmm. and it's just that the tools are so limited of yeah. what they provide in the training, and to get this additional background like that. I know for you, you talk about these five levels of healing and mm -hmm. five keys. Is there kind of a strategy that you like to... To, to structure this around for your clients? Yeah, absolutely. And and uh, this is, um, uh, I'm totally uh, taking on the work of, this is Dr. Klinghart, who, who kind of sort of defined these five levels, which he actually based on Panjali, who was the uh, original yogic teacher who wrote down all the yoga philosophies. But, you know, basically when you're looking at um, an illness, there, there are five different levels that we have to uh, focus on. The first would be the physical level. The second would be the energetic level. The third would be the mind level. 
the fourth would be uh, the transpersonal level, and the fifth would be the connection to something much larger than ourselves, the divine. So in Western medicine, we're taught um, really on that first level. Um, and conventional level, which is, hey, you know, what's your biochemistry, physiology, what's your lab numbers, um, you know, can we, what test can we do to, to figure out the imbalances? And even in functional medicine, I mean, th that's a lot of where our focus is, um, you know, nutritional deficits, what toxins, blah, blah, blah. That's a physical piece. But the next level up is really, uh, I think, really totally where med medicine is going in the future, the sort of the Star Trek thing, and this is energy. And how does energy affect us um, at an energy level, whether it's sound, whether it's light, um, uh, uh, actually uh, EMFs, uh, electromagnetic fields, is a huge, huge, huge problem uh, with us. Um, and then what is also the energy of, uh, of our culture? What's, what are we what are we watching? What are we listening to? What are we hearing all the time? Is this all this chronic, toxic, negative energy, stress, 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 stress. And when you watch the news, you watch all these, you know, horrible television shows that are really negative. So important to, to switch the energy around. Use sound, light, vibration, joy, play. Um, um, that kind of energy can really, um, it's amazing. And I know that you've uh, done that. And then, um, and then the, the third, again, the mind. What, what are our thoughts? Uh, and what did we grow up with? And, um, and this is where epigenetics really comes in, is because we know that we can actually change our body's physiology based on our thinking patterns. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, anybody who's done any studying around this understands that, that that first six to seven years of life, we have a lot of patterns laid down uh, that run subconsciously and unconsciously in our hippocampus and our limbic system. Uh, so whatever me uh, messages that we learned often stay with us through our whole lives, but those can change. But our thoughts, whatever, you know, that mind level of, of what we're thinking and are we constantly in negativity? Are we as an unconscious brain? Because that'll completely affect our physiology. So that's the third level. The fourth level is what we would call, um, you know, transpersonal or transgenerational. And this is uh, where uh, trauma and um, generational trauma comes in, um, you know, as, as well as at the, at the third level in terms of personal, our personal life experience is going to affect our thoughts. But, uh, you know, we can transgenerationally carry a lot of stuff and a lot of abuse and and so it's no wonder, but when we go back and whatever complex illness that we are dealing with, if we are... Um, cognizant of what are the whole constellation of family patterns and with the the technique that uh, Klinghart uses I think is called family constellations since yes. uh, something like that yeah mm -hmm. and then um, uh, so that is important to acknowledge and you know I'll just say for my own in my own situation my my father who's who's uh, 92 um, is a um, uh, concentration camp survivor. He was, uh, he worked for the uh, Polish uh, underground resistance movement uh, for the, and, um, and he was captured by the Nazis and, and he was Catholic, but you know, it didn't matter. Um, but, uh, you know, of course, uh, there's so much trauma and embodied trauma there that, that was never really dealt with. And that gets passed on generationally. So we know that there's a lot of depression, anxiety, and, and of course, toxic mold is, what is that about? It's about toxic gases. What is Auschwitz about? Toxic gases, you know? So uh, it's really interesting to and look at those family constellation patterns at that fourth level. And then, and the fifth level is, is our connection to something that's larger than ourselves. Um, so to the divine, what, in whatever form that you want to characterize that. And it's so, so important, whether that's nature, look at that incredibly beautiful, you live in such an amazing, amazing, mm -hmm. spiritually beautiful place um, uh, behind you. But uh, that connection that, that there is a larger energy that flows through the entire universe and all of us and whatever label we want to put on it to tap into that is absolutely essential in order to create a total uh, a whole body healing. Whether or not you are cured, you can heal. So those are the those are the five levels. <laughs> well, Margaret, I, I love the way you wove all that together, and you laid out such a great plan. And I, I'm just envisioning myself as a client sitting in front of you in your office and hearing you talk to me like this. <laughs> I think everybody is wishing they could fly to Texas to come see you. Oh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> you really have such an eloquent way of expressing these these really complex ideas. We've talked with other speakers about the adverse childhood experiences and how they contribute to future life issues, but you're talking about transgenerational 
mm-hmm. trauma being manifested in the next generation. That's a kind of a hard concept for a lot of people to grasp. Can we dig into that a little bit? Sure, sure, a- absolutely. Um, so, you know, what, what, we, uh, what we know is that when traumatic events happen, there is actually epigenetic changes mm-hmm. to our DNA. So um, it can change, the, for example, the methylation pattern. So your ability to detoxify, uh, for example, or to produce uh, hormones or, or produce neurotransmitters can be impacted or affected. And we certainly know this at a chemical level. So we are understanding now that, you know, uh, exposures of our, our mother's and grandmothers um, to something toxic during their pregnancy can last for, uh, you know, end up for three or four generations down the line and it can impact us. But we also know at an energetic level uh, that the the same thing that can happen. So again, if you've had a lot of trauma uh, or there's been a lot of trauma, (laughs) uh, Mm -hmm. that can also be, uh, affect us generationally. And there there goes my alarm. Hang on, let me get it. It's okay. I thought those were divine chimes. No, no, yeah, well, well, those are actually they are. It's um, it it goes off every two hours on the eleven um, uh, to uh, remind me to be uh, mindful and present. So hang on. I, I love. I'm just going to continue. I love when our uh, speakers have these self care hits, and this is something that everybody can do. And, you know, here's Dr. Margaret Christensen. She doesn't just talk the talk. She walks the walk. She so, so, yes, yes. Yeah. So, so, so if anybody, if, yeah, if anybody's actually ever done any 12-step work, um, uh, they'll know that the 11th step is, is about improving our conscious contact with God as we understood God. And uh, so I just re- remind myself every two hours um, that uh, that's, that's my, part of my job. And I love how you say that, not to get deep into that <clears throat> topic, but, but how you understand it. How do you connect how, how do everybody has a different relationship with themselves, with their higher divine and, and, and just find a relationship, whatever that may be for you. I do think that that's a big, powerful part of healing. Uh, ab- absolutely. And, and for me, you know, I have a, a daily practice of, <clears throat> of, of mindfulness and, and meditation where I take, you know, t- uh, at least 20 minutes to do um, uh, some meditation. And I'll, sometimes I'll use guided, sometimes I'll just use silent. I have a whole stack of daily readers and um, I totally uh, recommend, um, there's two that I really recommend for folks. Uh, one is called A Pocket Full of Miracles by mm-hmm. Joan Borisenko. And uh, Joan uh, has written amazing, amazing books, including a, a book that I really like recommend um, uh, called a woman's book of life, uh, which uh, which correlates the physiological changes with that sp- psycho spiritual level. So Joan Borisenko's um, A Pocket Full of Miracles is a great daily uh-huh. reader, and the other one is is called the language The Language of Letting Go by Melody Beatty. And Melody Beatty um, that's a daily reader. She wrote a very famous book called Codependent No More, mm-hmm. and, and then another one called Beyond Codependency. And I think that for women, that is absolutely <clears throat> essential reading. Um, yeah. Yes. Completely essential reading. Um, so, because um, it's, it's all learning about self care. So, those are the things that I that I uh, I, I do every morning, and um, I've I've had a very uh, long and um, interesting journey to get here. Actually, if anybody uh, wants to watch, I have a YouTube that's called Re- Reclaiming Sacred Sexuality, which is. Um, uh, uh, kind of uh, all about that connection of, uh, you know, to, to something the greater than oneself and, um, and, and particularly around the whole sexual realm. So we were talking about ACEs and adverse childhood events um, and also really the, kind of the, the, the whole Me Too movement. You know, when we look at the fact that at least one out of every three women um, has had some type of uh, uh, sexual uh, abuse of of trauma of some sort, you know, um, it can be from, you know, being, you know, molested or inappropriately just, you know, talked to, to, I mean, really severe, um, uh, you know, rape, incest, incest, that kind of thing. And the other thing is one out of every five to six men. So, um, so when we understand what that does to our entire body, to our entire psyche, to impacting the genetic expression in, in our bodies, to Im- impacting our limbic system, impacting our hippocampus um, at a physiological level, uh, and how that, that type of energy uh, is translated over many years and, again, many generations, you know, if you grow up in a house that has had um, – uh, 
oftentimes, again, alcoholism and, you know, physical abuse go together and sexual abuse um, and or any kind of addictive behavior. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be alcohol. It can, I mean, actually, some of the worst is actually... Uh, spiritual abuse in in very um, uh, in very uh, tightly you know super highly uh, religious households that um, are um, you know, sort of fanatic yeah so I mean if you look at uh, and you can and this is all religions it doesn't matter which one you know which ones you're looking at um, uh, you can see you know really some uh, severe uh, spiritual abuse and sometimes the worst sexual abuse goes on there um, and that's you know, a very it's, it's Margaret what you're really kind of hinting at if I may is yes, it's, yes. it's these extremes of behavior that just yeah. probably aren't good for people in general and, absolutely you know, we talk about a lot of feelings being in the pit of our stomach or being right. gut-wrenching or we talk about people dying of a broken heart and I know you speak about courage and being wholehearted how do you see those two going together and how do you encourage people to develop to have more courage and to be more wholehearted well, it's interesting because the word courage or courage uh, comes from the French word cur, C-O-U-E-R, which means heart, um, with heart. Mm -hmm. So to be courageous is to, is to do things with heart. And um, so even if you're fearful, you can take that, that heartfelt energy and um, and just do what you need to do and and then again the the whole concept of wholeheartedness I mean just using your entire being to 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 move forward um, so there's a uh, brother Steindl Rost uh, has a, um, a very fabulous uh, conversation that he has with David White um, on um, uh, midlife and the great unknown is another great thing to listen to uh, um, but he talks about uh, that uh, sometimes that the antidote to exhaustion is not necessarily rest, but mm -hmm. the it's, it's wholeheartedness. It's so it's doing whatever that you're doing and bringing that great power of love uh, into it and, um, uh, and, and courage and that courageousness mm -hmm. and facing, facing your demons and looking at yourself uh, first <laughs> before you point your fingers at anybody else um, and, uh, and, and, and moving forward in, in, even in very difficult times. So, um, yeah. Oh, I, I love when you deep in, you dig into the word courage and talk about this wholeheartedness and, and leading with the heart. That's something yeah. that we talked with some other speakers about heart math and about finding yeah. this coherence. Do you use things like heart math with your patients or what are some of the skills you help them to leave your clinic with? Uh, yeah, well, we, um, we have, uh, uh, we have a lot of uh, meditation programs here and sound mm -hmm. uh, sound baths. Heart math is one of the things I've, I totally have wanted to uh, introduce in, into our um, in, into our uh, clinic. Um, uh, we use a lot of Annie Hopper's work and mm -hmm. retraining the brain, um, and um, I send a lot of people for things like EMDR um, and uh, again psychotherapy, twelve mm -hmm. steps. Can you talk a little bit about EMDR? I don't think a lot of people know about EMDR, and it's okay. a very powerful. Yeah, thing. yeah. Um, and I always forget what it stands for. Uh, eye movement, eye movement, movement rapid desensitization technique, exactly. something like that. Yeah. Yep. And again, it's just another way of of rewiring the brain where um, a uh, you know, a, a current trauma is 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 brought to mind, and then using eye movements, or there's also a device that you can actually hold in your fingers, mm -hmm. where you get these physical sensations. Um, but you you take yourself um, back to it, and in. in to and you don't actually have to go deep into the trauma at all, um, but you can visualize a different outcome or what you had would have done to 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 change the situation. You help to rewire the brain, yes. and it's it's just it's an, another really amazing tool and technique. Um, uh, you know, but l let me. I just wanted to uh, talk. I don't know. I'm not sure if anybody's already mentioned this, but you kind of talk about again electromagnetic fields. Um, that's that's what heart math is working with. Mm -hmm. our, our EKGs are done because we know that the heart produces an electromagnetic field. So this is again back at that sort of energy level. Mm -hmm. We know that the brain. Uh, produces an electromagnetic field. That's what we do EEGs with. Um, and uh, it goes out about, you can measure it out about 18 inches. Mm -hmm. but from the heart, we can measure out six feet. Yes. That, that, that's how far that electromagnetic field extends. So when you walk into a room, you can sense 
what's going on if, if you are in, in, in your intuitive knowing, if you're in your body. And that's so important for women to just totally yes. grasp that uh, and, and allow that. But you can sense what the, the field is uh, when you're just picking up. And I'm sure some folks have talked about the vagus nerve and the fact that we have actually more information going to the brain from the heart than coming from the brain down. So the, the heart is really a receptive organ that's bringing in that energetic field. And uh, so really learning how to actually both open the both open the heart to receive as well as using techniques to to not block but um, what's the word maybe screen yeah. um, uh, screen filter. Or, uh, yeah. filter thank you this using yeah. filters hey and how do you use a filter to allow in what serves you what nourish you which which what opens you uh, what fills you uh, what and, and, and then reflect back what doesn't serve you anymore. And that's really kind of all um, heart chakra. Yeah, I love, how, I love how you describe the brain as a receiving organ because we think it's all just communicating out. Right. And yes, it receives through your sense of hearing, smell, and eyesight. We now think the heart is actually a communication organ. It's actually an endocrine organ as mm -hmm. well because it releases neurochemicals and neuropeptides that modulate the endocrine system and talk back and forth. You mentioned the heart chakra, and can you share just a, a brief description of how you think about the chakras, how you describe them, and what's so sure. special about the heart chakra? Well, uh, you know, it's uh, it's really interesting. So again, the, the, the chakras are seven seven to eight different energy centers in the body that was originally described in, in yogic medicine. And I I just love, love, love this work. And I love Carolyn Mace's work uh, around it, M-Y-S-S. Yes. Um, um, and uh, so really the heart chakra is, is all about giving and receiving love. And it's the fourth chakra, uh, the color uh, that's associated with it is green. And so if you have blocks in, 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 in this energy center, and by the way, it's, uh, so you have three chakras below that connect you down to the earth, down to your ancestors, down to your will, to your, um, your again, your kind of uh, sexual and creative energies is below the heart chakra, and above it is is the fifth chakra about speaking, and then the sixth chakra about mind and receiving and and uh, thoughts and energy, and then this you know the seventh chakra again receiving divine energy. So the heart chakra meets right here in the middle, and it, it bridges um, matter and um, and energy and. Mm -hmm. Uh, so when we have blocks in this area of energy, we can uh, we can have a broken heart, or mm -hmm. the breasts are part of the fourth chakra. So it's no wonder again women have so many breast issues um, and breast cancer, and uh, because sometimes in order to wake up about what's really going on in our lives, we have to cut off that piece of ourselves, or we get a broken heart because uh, again energetically something is going on that is really impacting us. So uh, I I always bring that in. I you know I ask you know what are you doing to nurture yourself and, and are you giving yourself away? Are you giving, you know, are you trying to take care of everybody else and, and not giving yourself the heart nourishment that you need and the sweetness and beauty in your life and joy that you need? So. Margaret, I just want to take a second and <clears throat> tell all of our viewers, this is Dr. Margaret Christensen. She graduated cum laude, Bachelor of Science in Biology, top tenor graduating class, Alpha Omega Alpha in Baylor College, a resident at Baylor and OBGYN, on the faculty at Baylor, and one of the senior faculty members of the Institute for Functional Medicine lectures internationally and nationally, this is what your doctor could be like. <laughs> you could have a doctor that's that good in medicine, but also can talk about trauma and adverse childhood events and chakras. Those people do exist, and I encourage everybody viewing to find someone like Dr. Margaret. They do exist, and this is the future doctor you're listening to right here, someone who oh, can thanks. incorporate all of this and treat you as that unique, personalized person like that. It's, it's so great to hear you talk like this, Margaret, because I, I love the way you think and I love the way you share. You mentioned don't, Joan Borsenko, and if I could leave a pearl yeah. for our viewers. Yeah. We've had Carolyn here, we've had Joan here speaking. Joan taught me, when you feel no down in your belly, don't, yet, don't let yes come out your mouth. <laughs> and I think Obama said the three second rule, count to three seconds before you say yes to anything. But if you feel no in your belly, don't let yes come out your mouth. That's a great self-care um, pro for women. 
Yeah, you know, absolutely. You were talking about EMFs and EKGs and EGs and then the vagus nerve. We talked a little bit about that in a, in a previous talk, but let's talk more about the vagus. It's the wanderer that touches every organ and really ties the brain to just about everything. How do you visualize that and what can we do to help it be the best she can be? Oh my gosh, there is, you know, it's, it's such a powerful connection, uh, again, between um, the, the brain, the heart, and the belly. So you, you talk about that, uh, again, when you get a gut, when you, we have gut feelings for a reason. I'm sure somebody has, you know, commented on the 90% of our neurotransmitters are produced in our intestines. So when you're getting that gut feeling, and then oftentimes, you, you'll, you'll get a physical feeling in your heart of like, hmm? you know, a, a, a tightness or a shrinkage or, uh, you know, pain. And then, uh, uh, you know, and then again, it's again connected uh, to the brain. So there's all kinds of things that we can do. And when we have vagus nerve issues, you can get a lot of palpitations, you can get, uh, you know, a lot of uh, anxiety. Um, again, it, it can be coming from all three of those places. Uh, so anything to increase the parasympathetic tone, so that's the rest and digest rather than sympathetic overdrive, can make an, an amazing, amazing difference. Um, and so I, we have it here at Carpathia, we have uh, just an amazing functional chiropractic neurologist. So she she's taught us all kinds of uh, stuff. And then my, uh, my naturopathic partner, Dr. Heidi Rathkabal, um, you know, also. So one of the things that you can do to increase vagal tone is gargle, um, gargle every day, um, uh, sing. And um, see, I have a toothbrush here on my, um, on, on my desk here that I show. You can just, you can, you can just gag yourself because that's one of the things that's st- st- when you brush your teeth. Just I've never heard that. a doctor recommend yeah, yeah, doing yeah, that, yeah, but yeah, it does yeah, work. Yeah. So, but, gar- but um, you know, gargling your ABCs um, mm-hmm. a couple times a day, those are, those are kind of some simple uh, ways to, to I, I do that every morning, better. Margaret, just for that uh, reason. I think it was from listening to one of your talks actually. Okay. Well, I um, specifically yeah. do that to turn on my Vegas yeah. and then do it with the intention. Yeah. And what I encourage everybody to do is look up what the Vegas nerve looks like and see how it wanders all around. And while you're doing your gargle, visualize it. Mm-hmm. And that's that power of intention. Do you sometimes use that in your therapies to help? Oh, them? absolutely. A- a- absolutely. And the intention is, is perfect. And, and again, if we're coming back to the vagus nerve, we know that 80% of the information um, running through the vagus nerve is coming from the gut and from the heart to the brain. Mm-hmm. And only 20% is, is, is um, wow. efferent. So, so 80% is afferent going from the body into the brain, whereas um, only 20% gives direction. So just kind of what you said, the heart is a receiving organ, the gut is a receiving organ. Our instinctual selves are so important mm. to, to pay attention in that intuitive self and that energetic knowing and all that's been squashed. And, yes. you know, I mean, I, I, and another really great author and book that I recommend is anything by Jeannie Octoberg, Dr. Jean Octoberg. Mm-hmm. She, um, uh, she wrote a fabulous book called um, Woman is Healer that kind of tells the story of, of uh, kind of, again, women in the healing arts from the pre-Christian times or, you know, prehistoric times, but through the witch burnings and what, you know, and uh, what the, all the witch burnings were about. And it's women who were healers and who had knowing and intuitiveness. And um, so paying attention to that intuitive uh, energetic receiving that our whole bodies can do through Carolyn's work, through Joan Barry Senkett's work, through the work of uh, Jean Shinoda Bolin is one of my big teachers and mentors, and mm-hmm. she's an absolutely amazing author. Any of her work, Goddesses in Every Woman, uh, Crossing to Avalon, Women's Midlife Pilgrimage, uh, Urgent Message from Mother, uh, um, yeah, that and the, the urgent message from Mother is Gather the Women, Save the World is the is the uh, under that and, and well, you've really um, given some yeah. great books for our listeners, yeah. right? I think, yeah. And I, I think you talked about Joan Borsenko, yeah. Carolyn Mace. Can you give the other couple authors? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, write so, them down? yeah, yeah. Joan Borsenko is absolutely fabulous. Uh, Carolyn Mace, MYSS. I mean, it sounds like you've had her. Um, and uh, uh, Dr. Jean Shinoda Bolin. She's a union psychiatrist. So she is the women's Joseph Campbell. Um, mm-hmm. She, uh, all of her work is about archetypal energies that that we are living with and, and moving with and how to harness those. And a- absolutely fabulous, fabulous work. And Dr. Jeannie Ochterberg. So um, she. 
she has also uh, written uh, visualization and imagery and healing. She was one of the pioneers um, in, in that area. Um, Shamanism and Modern Medicine, that's another great book that she wrote. But uh, her, her book, Woman is Healer, incredibly, incredibly powerful. Well, these um, are great. We thank yeah, you so much. This yeah, is a great idea. Yeah, and then, I, you know, then we, we mentioned... Um, um, uh, we met Melody Beatty, uh, Melody Beatty, who wrote uh, write all you know the codependence work, and I mean there's uh, uh, Brene Brown. I mean I mean all the work that she has on vulnerability. Um, uh, so Margaret, yeah. there's so much work really for all of us to do yeah, for, for right. both men and women. Yeah. How does someone start? I mean, what, what, where where would you recommend for people to maybe pick up a book that sings to them and start with that, or where would where would you recommend someone just get started? I, I, I really like uh, just starting with those two I recommended in the beginning, just the da those daily readers, The Language of Letting Go and um, A Pocket Full of Miracles. I think that those are uh, two uh, really good books, just if we're talking about the psycho-spiritual end of things. I think, um, uh, you know, if we're talking about kind of women's health uh, in kind of in general, I think anything by Christian Northrup, which, oh, my God, I didn't mention mm -hmm. Christian Northrup. She's absolutely, um, absolutely one of my first mentors. And I, her book, Women's Bodies, Women's Wisdom, was when, when I read that, um, I had just That's been right out there, in huh? practice. Okay, great, great. And I think I have uh, right up here, I've got a, the wisdom of menopause uh, sitting up there. But um uh, Great. Yeah, that book is, is just, uh, really opened my mind. Uh, when I was, you know, I was, I'd been practicing for two years. I'd been out of residency. I was doing all the things I was taught and I couldn't figure out why I wasn't getting any, you know, mm -hmm. why, why women kept coming back and they, you know, I'm giving them all the pills that I was taught to do and I'm doing the surgeries, but they're still coming back. So I, it was really Christian uh, Northrop's work and Jean Shinoda Boland's work, um, that, that opened my eyes, um, and uh, and you know probably Carolyn Mace. So I think that those are those are all anything Carolyn Mace writes is fun. Yeah. Louise Hay, Louise Hay, yes. he, you can heal your body. Mm -hmm. And Margaret, do you feel like OBGYN as a specialty is is opening up more to the kind of work that you're doing, and how can we support them to do that better? Um, you know, uh, I, I think I'm, I'm hoping that as, as, uh, as the field of OBGYN is dominated by, uh, you know, moving into more women, um, uh, that, you know, that's happening. And I think that we are seeing, um, a lot more being paying attention to the huge, huge impact of our environment mm -hmm. on hormonal health. I mean, that is, you know, genetically modified foods and the air quality, uh, all of that is just the amount of chemicals that we have on our, that we put on our bodies and our face and everything, all of that has to be recognized. And I think, you know, finally we're sort of seeing a little bit of that in, in OBGYN, you know, but it's still the mentality of, of there's something wrong with your body. Um, you know, menopause mm -hmm. is, um, is ovarian failure, um, huh. you know, and, um, you know, and, 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 you know, periods are, um, you know, you're on the rag, it's the curse is whatever. It's like, you know, instead of teaching women about the power of their bodies, the power of their blood. Um, and that's the work I learned really from, from G, uh, from Christian Northrup. But what you just said is yeah. so powerful how as a culture we've used the verbiage yeah. that's developed a mindset around these natural life events right. to turn them into a negative when they're actually, instead of celebrating the transition that women go through mm -hmm. monthly and, and, and age-wise, to condemn it. It's, it. That's fascinating to think about it that way. Oh, absolutely. And, and I mean, that's one of the, the things that I did early in life uh, in my career is I, I used to host workshops for mother daughter workshops on coming Great. of age and, and again, celebrating periods and teaching women, you know, just just every once in a while, do the old timey thing and, and use some cloth rags and um, and then soak those rags and 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 keep the blood. Uh, uh, and I mean, and uh, use that to water your plants with and, and they'll grow like crazy. I mean, and you know, most, most wars have been fought over bloodlines and um, whose bloodlines. So, so blood is power. Blood is about power. And the heart is what circulates our blood, mm -hmm. you know? So when, when we can really um, uh, grasp that instead of it's a negative um, and, and again, the reason that women are having so many problems with it, whether it's severe endometriosis or infertility, painful cramps, heavy bleeding, those are imbalances going on. And if you can go underneath that to see why are you having that at all levels in physical, emotional, spiritual, chemical, nutritional, whatever abuse, um, I mean, that's actually 
you know, severe pelvic pain and heavy cramps and all that, the first question I ask is, you know, what's going on in your life, you know? And that's and, the question uh, that doesn't usually get asked. And oh, yeah, yeah ab absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, talking to, no, yeah, please. Please. Oh well, I, I was just gonna—I was just gonna tell you a story about a, a heart attack and one, one of my clients um, who um, uh, was fifty, um, a, a woman um, who. Um, uh, you know, has she was you know thin, in relatively good shape. Um, you know, ate more, you know, pretty cleanly. Nothing, nothing terrible. Um, but her, uh, uh, one of her uh, children, um, her got got addicted to uh, some meth, and um, and and this was a very well-to-do family, private schools, the whole thing, and. Um, and when she found that out, she had a heart attack. Wow. And, you know, it was about a broken heart, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, you know. And so it was not just about, hey, let's put you on statins and all this kind of stuff. It was, you know, there was, we, we, we worked with her at many different levels and she's gotten into drumming and drumming is healing. And um, again, that, that vibrational sound levels, how do, how do you actually heal beyond, uh, you know, taking a statin? So I'm not a well, fond of fan of those, by the way. We, we'll talk a little bit about those at the end. You know, you're talking about um, irregular menstrual cycles and differences yeah. in menopause, and, and yeah. you talked about the toxicity. I think the average woman now puts on 125 chemicals on mm -hmm. her body in the morning before yeah. she leaves for the day. This idea of toxicity and biotoxins like mold, I know you're one of the world's experts in this. Can we mm -hmm. dig into that a little bit? Because it's just not very well understood by many yeah. people, let alone many doctors. Well, sure. And, um, and, you know, uh, thank you for bringing that up because I've hosted the Toxic Mold Summit, which mm -hmm. is also available online through Health Talks. Um, and, uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, environmental toxins are, are uh, we're all practicing environmental medicine. That's what we're doing. And so learning how to clean all that up is incredibly important. Mold toxins in particular um, can be very uh, devastating, if, uh, particularly if you are in the 20 to 25% of the population that um, does not clear these little teeny tiny fat soluble toxins well. And um, we have 50% of houses, 60% of commercial buildings that have had water damage issues and creating these uh, toxic molds. This is different than outdoor environmental molds. Uh, but those, those mycotoxins that they can produce are incredibly immunosuppressive. They suppress the, the white blood cells production. At the same time, they're, uh, they trigger a lot of autoimmunity mm -hmm. and a lot of inflammation. Autoimmune disease can be seen with it. Psychiatric illness, oh my God, anxiety, depression, psychosis, bipolar. You know, you can grow up in a house that has got a mold issue and, and you know, you have one person who's really super crazy. You have another person who's addicted, alcoholism and addiction is, is all part of this. Another person presenting with ADD, brain fog, can't think, irritable all the time. You have, you know, your kids are chronically sick, upper respiratory infections, and autoimmune disease. So these are some of the different ways. And we know that mycotoxins are particularly damp, can be damaging to the heart mm -hmm. um, because one of the things they do is they affect your mitochondria, so your ability to produce energy. And where what has the most mitochondria in, in the body is the heart muscles. Mm -hmm. So it would make sense that if you have a toxin that is going after your uh, mitochondria, that your heart as well as your nervous system, because that's, that's the other place that has as many mitochondria, um, are going to be affected. And that can be can manifested in many different ways. So waking up to, to that, and especially if, um, if, if you're in a house where kind of everybody's sick all the time, but lots of different things, usually the dads aren't. Uh, a, they're not there as much, and B, they've got testosterone, which uh, tends to protect you a, a little bit more in terms from an immune system standpoint. Um, but uh, I, would, I would highly, highly recommend that if you have any of those symptoms that I just talked about, you know, brain fog, chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, all that, that um, and you've ever, ever, you know, lived or worked in a water damage situation, that there's plenty of ways that we can detox from it. And that's, that's a whole nother ball of wax, but yeah. Well, you know, Margaret, we were speaking in Dallas at one of the hotels, and yeah. three of us walked out of our room at the same time, and it was a hotel that had been water damaged in the past, mm -hmm. and none of us felt good. Right. But after about 20 minutes into the breakfast, yeah. I felt better, my friend felt better, but the other lecturer still didn't, and she didn't feel good the entire time we were there. Yeah. And that's that unique genetic vulnerability 
for me, I didn't really understand mold 20 years ago. I heard about it. I went to talks and it was one of those things, if I'm not going to be great at it, I don't really pretend I know how to do it. Right. But there were patients that just didn't get better for me and I couldn't figure it out. And when I went back and looked at mold, they were positive, looked at their genetics, they were the canary in the coal mine. And when we went through those protocols, they got better when nothing else worked. So I'm a huge believer that there are just canary in the coal mines and um, it may be such a big problem. Maybe related to Alzheimer's, definitely related to heart health, hormone imbalance. And a lot of these things, if, if someone isn't getting better, it's got to be on your differential of what might be wrong with you. Absolutely. Um, uh, I, I th- and mold toxicity, I mean, you're also in an area that's also some ende- endemic for Lyme. Um, but uh, one of my uh, ILADS friends who does a lot of Lyme work, she said in her experience, this is in her office, 100% of her Lyme patients, toxic mold was the trigger underneath it. And so when you go after that first, instead of doing, mm-hmm. you know, years of antibiotics and IV, in fact, yeah, I Get, watch Jay Davidson and any of his work yes. um, on the Chronic Lyme Summit. Um, <clears throat> it, that that's really really important. So I, I think um, uh, you know, please, yeah, think about uh, that. And it's so common. I mean, it's it's a pandemic issue. Not just houses, office buildings, churches, dorms, um, uh, cars, uh, schools, cars. Yeah, all, all of that. So I think it really behooves all of us to to pay attention. And then there's a whole then there's a whole energetic level of mold and. Uh, you know, and, and how our whole country is being built out of, you know, cardboard and sticks um, and the, the building codes and what we need to do to change as a community. And and I don't know who's talked about community on your. Uh, well, let's talk about summit. it. No, yeah. Please, so please. so commu- community is is so critical, mm-hmm. um, whether that's a support group of any sort that you're in or, a, you know, book club or reading group. But particularly if you've been chronically ill, um, uh, you need you need a support system and uh, and so any kind of whether it's online or whatever but we have as a country the need to energetically change the vibration of divisiveness of negativity of um, a discord that that we have and mm-hmm. you know the powers that be they like divide and conquer they like setting us all against one another yes so I would encourage everybody to work with your through your church group through your PTA at school through your recreation center um, if you uh, you know even even, you know, things like prisons, I mean, to, to uh, work together as communities to help to change the quality of the food, to organic garden, to, get, to absolutely ban the use of Roundup and Atrazine um, uh, everywhere, uh, to um, grow organic gardens, to, uh, and, and like with mold toxicity, there are ways now, there are amazing, amazing uh, things that we can do uh, to um, to kill off uh, uh, molds and get rid of them in our house with non toxic uh, non toxic foggers. So mm-hmm. you know, as a church, you can buy a unit and then you know teach people how to help one another uh, to go from house to house. It's kind of like old barn raising, you know. Yes. And th- same thing, PTAs in schools. So community getting together and and God bless James Maskell for. Um, Mm-hmm. For, for pulling together the functional medicine community uh, and, and creating, uh, you know, forums there. So um, with the evolution of medicine. So, yeah, any kind of community, connect with others, uh, connect the dots. Uh, and that also connects our heart chakra. Uh, we're, we're, we're connecting ourselves, uh, mm-hmm. you know, and with the intention of love, of, of goodness, of, uh, of healing and sending that, sending that out and, and asking for the divine energy to come through you and out through your heart, bringing up the earth energy and, and matter, the, 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 the nutrients, uh, the, you know, the mother earth herself, bringing that up through our lower chakras and we can radiate that out our heart chakra and, and that's how we can move through life. So well, I love, I love how you think of community and our friend yeah. Mark Hyman talks about refrigerator rights. And that's one thing I did when I moved into my new neighborhood Eight, uh-huh. eight years ago was I invited everybody over for dinner uh-huh. and I let them know you're welcome to come to my house and take something out of my refrigerator. If you need it for your dinner <laughs> that we call it refrigerator rights. I grew up with those where in our neighborhood, if you didn't have an egg, you could walk to your neighbor's house. Even if they weren't there, you could go to the refrigerator and get an egg. That's that sense of community we've lost in America mm-hmm. really worldwide. And yeah. so one thing I'd encourage is invite your neighbors over to dinner, have yeah. a potluck and show them some clean, healthy food. What James Maskell taught me was he had some friends in California that one of them wanted Roundup not in their neighborhood. So they asked all the neighbors to get together and just agree not to use it. 
And then one neighborhood stopped using it, then another one, then another one. Now an entire subdivision is Roundup free and they have little signs that as you drive down says, we are Roundup free. So the power of community is, is amazing. Once you get a one plus one, you can get 10. And, and then um, has anybody talked about the, the, Italian, the, the study of the Italian neighborhood uh, that was in New York? That, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, please, why don't you yeah, talk yeah, okay. about so it? That, that, I mean, you know, talk again, the, the, the power of community and, and generations. So, mm -hmm. uh, um, um, uh, and t t I don't remember the name of the community again, but this is, this is a famous study that, that really looked at the fact that, um, uh, that there was a whole lot less heart attacks in this one area compared to all the areas around it. Uh, and they, they were trying to figure out why, because they were smoking just as much. They were eating the same, you know, high fat, you know, diets with lots of butter and all that kind of stuff. But why is it that these men weren't dying and probably women too, they just weren't studying women then. Don't study women, um, yeah. No, um, you know, why, why, were these men living and not getting heart attacks, or even if they did heart attack, they did have a heart attack, they, they survived it. Uh, and it's because they had community. There was deep yes. community in those neighborhoods. And, you know, these big Italian families of multi-generations and get together all the time. Um, and again, you know, and through their churches or whatever, so I think that we are so isolated and that's uh, an isolation um, and loneliness is, more devastating to our health than smoking. Yes. You know? So so connect uh, and and reach out uh, and so that's what I would say. Well, I grew up in an Italian family. My Italian grandfather lived with us. We had six kids. My favorite part of every day was sitting around the big round table having a pasta dinner. And there's something powerful about that community, and it's the community, the Rosita community, you talk about yeah. with the yeah. less heart attacks and. And that's, you know, is the Mediterranean diet the best diet? Maybe, but if you eat it by yourself in loneliness, it's not. If you eat it with friends and people you care about, it may not matter so much what you eat. <laughs> Maybe the power of love is more powerful than any nutrition. Uh, and 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 that's really what the heart chakra is all about. I mean, this this is giving and receiving love and 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 being open to that. And so I would you know probably add to that when you're eating a meal uh, too. I mean, having just taking a moment and pausing with deep gratitude for yes. um, for the for you know whatever animals and plants have sacrificed themselves you know to to nourish us. And you know may we maybe resonate and vibrate in their highest good. And and that, that the work that we do uh, represents um, the. The, the beautiful energy that was given to us then that's really what communion is right it really is and and you know i teach all my clients to take three big belly breaths whether you say a prayer of thanks is your belief system but i'll ask you to take three big belly breaths to get the vagus nerve get your autonomic nervous system get your belly ready to eat to help everything work better margaret christensen i i, I could talk for, with you for days you're one of my favorite people to talk to oh, you thanks. have so much great energy and great information how do our viewers find you? How do they connect with you further? Well, um, they can check out our website, carpathiacollaborative.com. So Carpathia is C-A-R-P-A-T-H-I-A, -A -A, the word collaborative, C-O-L-L-A-B-O-R-A-T-I-V-E. Dot com. It's a mouthful, um, and uh, yeah, we have uh, we have an amazing uh, set of practitioners here. It's not just myself. My my uh, co-founder is uh, Dr. Heidi uh, Rasval. She's a naturopath. We have th uh, three, four uh, amazing uh, nutritionists, lifestyle uh, medicine, a great acupuncturist, amazing uh, chiropractic neurologist, uh, several other MDs, and um, uh, an essential oil specialist. And uh, we do a lot of uh, a, a lot of uh, community teaching so fantastic how could they find you on instagram facebook are you doing anything there uh we have a uh, carpathia has a facebook page um right. so yeah I'm, and any new projects you're working on you, uh, you absolutely um, the 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 mold summit so any anybody and who's listened to dr ann shippy's uh, talk and she's ann's on on with me mark hyman uh, mark almost died um uh, from uh, mold toxicity mm -hmm. uh so uh and annie hopper uh, is there with us and um, right. Uh, Klinghart, uh, Dr. Klinghart, and so I've got and uh, Tom O'Brien. Uh, we've got really again some amazing, amazing information about um, how to tackle this very pandemic issue. So um, I hope you'll um, uh, consider. I'll be there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> getting that. Yes. Yeah, so it's going to be on after the. I mean, yours is on after mine. So uh, anyway, so folks, uh, check out healthtalks.com and uh, yeah. 
It's such an important topic. And Dr. Margaret Christensen, thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. 